Hello and welcome you guys to my new video about the zeta function and the video before we talked a little bit about the zeta function how it looks like what it does actually and now I want to talk about a very important representation of the zeta function actually this is the most now I'm switching to complex variables it looks like this okay now um, two 3s plus 3 over s plus 4 over s okay plus and this goes infinitely forward and what one can do is actually one can rewrite this in such a manner i is equal 1 and 1 over this okay now 1 minus pi minus s okay uh, pi I always say pi somehow for P but actually this is uh, the prime number okay this is s the variable this is a prime number and one can prove this statement in two ways I will do in this video the first way uh, which is the original way or the the way Euler did it okay because this kind of representation of the zeta function is the Euler product and how did he find this out okay actually he started off by rewriting this series in another manner not serious okay I will I will just show you what he did actually I, I will start off with this okay now what he used was the geometric series okay the geometric series can be used here because one or oh, I will rewrite this it's pi 1 over pi i to the s and pi i is always uh, greater or equal to 2 so this means we have a number that's pretty small or uh, better is smaller than 1 and this is important so we can rewrite this as a geometric series which looks like this pi i minus s to the nth power n equals 0 to infinity okay this is what Euler did this is uh, the first step and this is uh, we just turned this into a geometric series I hope you know the geometric series what it means and if you don't know look at my other videos I have a video on the geometric series then you might understand this better normally one takes this series and turns this into this but we will do it the other way now what he did in the next step was this is also very important what he did so was to take this product and he said okay let's look at these ends as individual individual ends okay and what he said was if we take the product of this one could also switch these okay and I will rewrite it like this so we have n1 equals to 0 to infinity pi i minus s okay sorry I have to be I think this is um, i equals 1 okay to the nth power multiply this with n 2 0 to infinity I hope you can read this p2 minus s and and we continue this with all the prime numbers that are in the product and now you have a product of um, infinite sums and one can actually take them together I can uh, do, I, I have to use this index too and actually what he did then was he said okay I can put these all together and he mm -hmm, I'll just start off with zero okay then here comes the other sum and two equals zero and so forth okay and in the in the end we have a product of all these numbers okay pi p pi one uh, minus n1 s pi p2 uh, n2 s times p3 minus n3 s and so forth okay so all the prime numbers here you have different n's and you just um, go through all of them now what he used in the next step which is uh, actually the last step 
he said that these kinds of combinations, okay, actually you can take out the S here, I will do this, I'll do this so we can get a better view in that, actually these kind of representations are a representation for all integer numbers, this is just the way to factorize out um, prime number, okay, this is very important, you can uh, take a number n, I will, I will do that on the next page maybe, and factorize it out in prime numbers, or I will do this like here, okay, for example you have 6, you can rewrite this as 2 to the first power and 3 to the first power, okay, and you can do this for any kind of number, you can do Mm, defractionize or not defactorize this in two prime numbers as a product any integer number can be written as a product and if you have this kind of product actually what this will give you mm, this will give you n okay I can get every number n out of this and uh, with all the combinations you have to understand n to the minus one to the s and so n is starting off from 1 to infinity but if I rewrite this in another manner then you will see what we actually got just compare this with our starting point then what we have is this statement okay we have just proved that the zeta function can be written as a product and how we did this is was we, we took this product here uh, which was with a we used the geometric series because 1 over pi i s very important here is that the s is uh, from the real part I'm talking in the complex domain but uh, like uh, take its absolute value to be smaller uh, or no greater than 1 okay this has to be greater than one very important or the sum will not converge then what we did is we we wrote this product here with individual in the indices with n1 n2 and so forth then we just multiplied out all the sums with their products and what we saw was that we could generate any number with this kind of mechanism any number n and uh, we just uh, rewrote this to n minus 1 because we always had this minus uh, 1 here over there and minus 1 s and this actually led us to this and we proved this very very powerful theorem okay this uh, this proof is a little bit uh, algebraic it's uh, maybe you don't understand it that good so watch the next video because in that video I will explain it more um, more I will say pictorial and more easier to understand actually but this is not the proof of that okay so I hope you had fun and stay tuned uh, please subscribe if you want to see my late new videos on the zeta function because there are many a lot of them coming up the, I will also talk about the gamma function uh, the Euler gamma function also about the Taylor expansion of many many functions the exponential the logarithm the cosine sine arctangent binomial uh, theorem and and so forth so just stay tuned if you subscribe you will see my latest video so I thank you for watching and see you